Don't get married. Don't get married. Just right. The bitch. Just want to commend you on your show. This should automatically be like a religious practice for everyone. You are number one professor of all time, and I think you should be nominated for professor of the year. Every day I listen to your show. Every day I just get a little inch more and more and more and more. Not to get married. She is an anomaly. Okay. And if you knew what anomaly meant, maybe you wouldn't have agreed so quickly. You're saying that you have no idea why so many people like her. No, that's not what anomaly means. Okay, I'm an idiot. I was engaged for three months, and my ex-fiance has been listening to your show a lot. And I'm not blaming you, of course not, but he wants to live the Tom Lakers life. Ever since I've had that attitude, pump them and dump them, it's been working out a lot better than trying to find wine and dine them. It's obvious you're a woman hater. Oh, no, I love women. No, 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 I listen to your show. I love women. Don't I love women. Love women. Oh, I do. Haters. That's why I've had as many as I can fit into my bed. I, I, okay, I love women. I can't get enough. I give you, but overall, you, you hate women. You know, Dr. Neil Warren Clark, the 29... Oh, Dr. Neil, Dr. Neil Clark Warren with the 29 dimensions of compatibility. Yes, there's not 29 dimensions. There's two dimensions. Do you know what they are? The penis and a vagina. <laughs> Treat women like crap and they come back for more. Exactly. It's like dogs. They're like dogs. Give them a piece of meat, they come back with their brother. It's, no, it's no accident we call them bitches. Chuck, what did you want to say to Pete? Man, I just want to let you know that, Pete, you are so whipped, it's pathetic. You're like a green blade of grass, man. You are a gameless wonder. You wonder why you have no game. You have no game, you have no balls, and it's pathetic. She's got your nose so wide open, you can fit an Amtrak train through that thing, man. It's ridiculous. She comes over your house, you need to be slapped. In fact, I wish I was close to you, I'd slap you too. There is no better feeling, man, than just putting a couple handfuls on those melons and just holding on. <laughs> whenever I'm not looking, I find the jerk. And then whenever I'm looking, I'll find a bigger jerk. What's the deal? I don't know. I, all I know is that when the guy's a jerk, most women come back for more. That is true, but... <laughs> I just wanted to call and let you know I just came back from Brazil about a week ago. Really? Best trip of my life. Yes, two weeks straight, man. Uh, were you uh, picking up more ass than a toilet seat? I think so, man. It's probably diarrhea, if you want to call it, man. It was all over, man. <laughs> now, Victor, hang on a second here. Let me get Mark on. Mark, what did you want to say to Victor? Victor. Yes, Mark. One thing, tell your wife, I want you to give your wife an ultimatum. What should I tell her? You tell her, look, if you're not going to give me everything that I want from you, I'm going to take 20 bucks out of your wallet, and I'm going to go down the street and go find it. See what she has to say about that. <laughs> Who really cares about what women think? All we really care is about how they look. If you wanted to, you could pick a specific example of a great woman and make a big generalization about women based on her. I'm not saying there can't be a great woman out there. I'm simply saying that in general, women think they are entitled in this country. Women think they're entitled to money just because a marriage didn't work out. That's the other thing you keep saying that just makes me spit mad. From Hollywood, it's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. B-I-T-C-H. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. A different kind of radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right wing whacker or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're gonna need it. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. One eight hundred five eight hundred eight. Six six. Thank you so much for tuning in on this Friday, beautiful Friday here in Southern California. It's cooled off a little bit. We had four straight amazing days of summer weather. Summer weather deep in the bowels of fall. And uh, today is a little more normal. 
Beautiful sunny day. What a great day to hang out. I've spent a lot of time outdoors this week. I've enjoyed it. But you got to go to work at some point. <laughs> and so I had to come in from the beautiful sunshine and do a little work. That's right. Wide open telephones on the Tom Likas show. Anything goes here. Anything at all. We can talk about anything that's on your mind. It can be anything we discussed on the air this week. Anything you think we should have talked about, you can call up, yell, scream, complain, jump up and down. It's all fair game as long as you're absolutely fascinating. If you're not, we kick your ass the hell off the phone. It's that simple. All you have to do is call us here at 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Now, if you do not meet our standards for telephonic excellence, if you are not absolutely entertaining, Dean J. D'Amelio, going into year seven as your, is it year eight, Dean? Oh, Holy Christ. Year eight as your genial bouncer will not be so genial. He will swing that Louisville slugger uh, and proceed about a thousand on your head. That's what he will do, as he's done in the past. So uh, you give us a ring here at one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. And uh, I'm just feeling my oats, feeling my oats for this particular edition of the Tom Likas Show. Absolutely anything at all can happen here. I have um, an email from a listener who uh, works for a major talent agency here in Los Angeles, one of the biggest. So I won't give his name. Big sports fan. He writes and says, Tom, I am a Seattle transplant in Los Angeles. As a long-time listener, I hope you will open up your airwaves to a topic that needs attention. The shameless attempt to move the storied Seattle Supersonics to Oklahoma City. Seattle Supersonics are the NBA, in case you're not paying attention. He says, I simply ask that everyone keep this issue as high profile as possible. Talk about it. Engage. Unite. I believe that the more national attention this matter receives, the more likely the right thing will eventually be done. I hope this team is somehow sold to a local interest or even made the first publicly owned NBA team, a la the Green Bay Packers. Well, I got something to say about, about this email. I have got something to say about it. He says here, most people, including sports writers, fans, etc., agree that this attempt to move the team to Oklahoma City is a travesty. I don't agree. I'll tell you why. Coming up. The Sonics, he says, belong in Seattle. The reasons are too numerous to divulge in an email. I will say if Seattle supported the Sonics through the dark years of Wally Walker's disastrous reign, that they deserve the Sonics to stay in Seattle. A marginal player at best. Walker's executive role included running Sonic legends Gary Payton, George Carl, and Nate Mr. Sonic McMillan out of town. Generating a sad state of apathy among Seattle's usually strong fan base. We are slowly recovering and do not deserve another sucker punch from a carpetbagger like Bennett. Clay Bennett, the now owner of the Seattle Supersonic who clearly had no intentions of keeping the team in Seattle, despite his transparent promise to, quote, try and make it work. The fact that he and NBA Commissioner David Stern are buddies makes this all the more unsavory. He says, I know you are a fan of the city of Seattle. It is an amazing place. I hope when I return to visit, I'll be able to see the Sonics playing there for a long time to come. I urge you to discuss this topic on your show if you have not done so already. As I write this, I realize you probably already have. However, I want to keep the pressure on everyone involved to make this turn out correctly. Thanks, Tom. Now, Jeff. 
I'm sure you're a great guy, and I'm thrilled that you are a listener to the Tom Likas show. I think it's fantastic. But um, you do not have a right to watch basketball. You do not have a right to have a team. This is private industry. Okay? Here in Los Angeles, uh, we learned that all too well when we lost the the Los Angeles Rams and the former Los Angeles Raiders. In the same year, they both moved. And now we have no NFL team here anymore. But how can we complain? Because we got the Rams from Cleveland. Right? We got the Raiders from Oakland. Then they went back to Oakland. We got the Dodgers from Brooklyn. Right? I mean, uh, there's very few teams that were born in Southern California that are of any note. The Los Angeles Kings, the Los Angeles Angels. I give a rat's ass. We tack Anaheim's name there. F that. Los Angeles Angels. And uh, the Anaheim Ducks. Those are the only professional teams that were born here in Southern California. Uh, the uh, Los Angeles Clippers came from San Diego, and before that, Buffalo. That's how the business works. The team goes for the best deal they can get. And having had prior experience dealing with the, I'm just going to call them, in my opinion, the morons who run the Seattle Center, where the Sonics play, I can hardly blame them for wanting to leave. On top of that, as far as building a new arena is concerned, well... The place where the Sonics play, whatever they're calling it these days, whatever Banks' name is attached to it, um, it is certainly not as nice and not as profitable as other arenas like Staples Center here in Los Angeles and other places. It's antiquated. Even though they renovated it about 10 or 15 years ago, it is just, it's behind the curve. And it's very hard to make the case that you don't spend public money on subsidizing billionaires when you have built a football stadium and a baseball stadium uh, within less than a 10-year period at great public expense. Now you tell the Sonics, well, we don't do that kind of thing here. Oh, yes, you do. <laughs> oh, yes, you do. I, for one, do not see, and I must say, I, for one, do not see any reason why the Sonics uh, should stay um, if they've got a brand new arena in Oklahoma City waiting for them. It's only lightly used by the Hornets. And the Hornets, when they thought the Hornets were going to stay, were drawn 20,000 a night in Oklahoma City. And it's an arena that has all the modern conveniences. No city is entitled to a team. It's a business. That's what it is. And so I... I understand that you're emotional about it. I understand that uh, just like I lived in New York City, uh, I was a bit before my time, but the Brooklyn Dodgers left Brooklyn for Los Angeles. And when I grew up in New York City, people in New York City hated Los Angeles for taking the Dodgers away. Hated L.A. And as kids, we were raised to hate Southern California or hate California altogether. But let's face it. The Dodgers got a much better deal by leaving Brooklyn and coming to Los Angeles. In the final season, the Dodgers played in Brooklyn in that antiquated uh, piece of crap that everybody waxes nostalgic about, that Ebbets Field. The Dodgers were drawing about nine, ten thousand a game. A game. Their first game in Los Angeles, they drew over 99,000 fans, a major league record that stands today, the equivalent of almost 10 home games in Brooklyn the previous season. The Dodgers now draw over 4 million people in their most recent incarnation. When they drew a million five, a million six in Brooklyn, that was considered a big deal. So 
Did the Dodgers make the wrong move? I don't care how many people were brokenhearted. You are not entitled to a team. You're not entitled to have your sports team. I mean, it, it shows how becoming so deeply enmeshed, so deeply entwined with a team is so stupid because ultimately if you become that attached, at some point they get a better deal and they move somewhere else. They do. I'm sure there's people in Oakland, California, upset that the A's are going to leave Oakland. And they're moving 20 miles down the road to Fremont. But uh, nobody was weeping when the A's came to Oakland in 1967 from Kansas City. Uh, Nobody was weeping about that. Nobody. Look at all the teams that have moved. The Memphis Grizzlies went from Vancouver to Memphis. The Utah Jazz have that ridiculous name because they were once the New Orleans Jazz. The New Orleans Hornets were once the Charlotte Hornets. That's just the way it is. Even the Detroit Pistons came from Fort Wayne, Indiana. Did you know that? Do you know the Sacramento Kings were once called the Kansas City Kings? And then for a couple of seasons, they were called the Kansas City Omaha Kings. They split their time between Omaha, Nebraska, and Kansas City. And that's after they had been known as the Cincinnati Royals. The Atlanta Hawks once played in St. Louis. They were the St. Louis Hawks. Till the 60s. St. Louis hasn't had an NBA team since. Pittsburgh has never had an NBA team. Ever, ever, ever. Never, ever. The Atlanta Braves were the Milwaukee Braves. Before that, they were the Boston Braves. The Texas Rangers were the Washington Senators. The Minnesota Twins had also been a team called the Washington Senators. The Washington Nationals were the Montreal Expos. You are not entitled to a team. These teams are going to go where they get the best deal. That's how it works. Boo-hoo-hoo. Grow up. Get used to it. Please. We can talk about this or anything else that's on your mind at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's wide open telephones on the Tom Likas show on a spectacular Friday. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1 800 5800 Tom. 1 800 5800 866. I was in the shower and I got out of the shower and my wife was checking my cell phone. And I swear to God, for like the last week, every day I get home, she's like, What what number was this? What number was that? Who is this? Who is that? She's like, Who is Kim? I feel like telling her, Hey, bitch, Kim's the girl I'm banging behind your back. It's the Tom Likes Show. Tom like this show. Wide open telephones on this Friday. 1 800 5 800 Tom. Dave on the Tom like this show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Dave. How are you, sir? I'm doing okay. Long time, fourth time. Oh, okay. Very good. <laughs> um,. I want to say uh, about these these people that are upset about teams moving to a different city. That seems to me more like a like a like an ego problem. Because uh, you know I, I'm a Rams fan. I like the St. Louis Rams, and I liked them when they were in L.A. Because I like the players and the team. I don't care what city they represent. Yeah, it sucked when they moved. I couldn't. You know, it's an inconvenience now. I got to fly to St. Louis if I want to watch them. But I mean, come on. It's about your team. It's not about your city. Yeah, that's great if your favorite team plays in the city you live in or live close to, but yeah, give me a break. Well, the way I look at it is I'll root for the teams that are in my city, and then when they move, if other teams come in, I'll root for them. I really don't care. Right, and, that, and that's, you know, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a Laker fan and a Clipper fan because I'm from L.A. But, right, you know, I mean, like imagine there were people who were Cleveland Browns fans. Then the Cleveland Browns moved to Baltimore and became the Baltimore Ravens. Mm-hmm. I'm sure there are certain people in Cleveland who continued to root for the team uh, as they had in the past until right, there was I... a new team called the Cleveland Browns wearing the same uniforms, and uh, they play in Cleveland. And now I'm sure there's very few Baltimore Ravens fans in Cleveland. I mean, that's just how it works. Right. But, uh, but you know, the, the guy, the, the email that you got is just like, relax, man. You know, if you like the Sonics for who the Sonics are and the Sonic team, the players, then it shouldn't matter where they go because you're following them. But the reality is, you know what? I mean, 
I mean, Jerry Seinfeld said it best when he uh, when he when he put it this way. He said, "What are you rooting for anyway? You're rooting for laundry." I mean, right. they, it's just uniforms you're rooting for. I mean, what does any of this mean? Yeah, what do you just, like? The corporation that owns the Rams? Do you like Georgia Frontier? Do you like uh, what does you like about the Rams? You you grew up recognizing that helmet and those colors, which have changed since they left, by the way. Uh huh. And uh, but the other thing is, you know, 11 million people live in Southern California, and that stadium, when full, held a maximum of 80,000 people. Out of 11 million, most people never went to see the Rams in person. So if you've got satellite TV and you get the NFL package, it doesn't really matter where they play. Who knows the difference anyway? Look here in Southern California how many Raider fans there still are. Yeah. The Raiders haven't played a game in, in Los Angeles in 12 years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a label. I mean, it's like going to your favorite grocery store. Does it matter what city it is? No. I mean, that's all there is to it. Most people never went to a Rams or a Raiders game when they played in Los Angeles. That's it, period. All right, well, Tom, blow me up, as always. Have a good day. You too. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's Brad on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. What's happening, Tom? Not much, Brad. All right, so you said not to get too attached to sports teams, but... Born and raised in Detroit, I think we have some of the storied franchises and don't really have to worry about them going anywhere. Well, that's not necessarily true. That's what people said about the Brooklyn Dodgers. Well, yeah, I guess that's true. But, well, the economy's going to hell, but otherwise I would say those teams aren't going anywhere. Well, I know you can say that, but the Tigers and the Lions have new facilities. The Tigers relatively new, about, what, seven or eight years old. And the yeah. uh, Lions, what, about three years old, something like that? Yep. Uh, but the Red Wings are still playing in the now aging Joe Louis Arena. Yeah, that that place's days are numbered. That's right. And uh, the Pistons play out there in Auburn Hills, and I guess if they're happy out there, that's fine. That's a pretty modern facility, although now about 20 years old. Yeah, the owner owns the building, so that's why they're stuck 40 miles yeah but believe me uh, all teams are on the bidding block uh, even the new york yankees threatened to leave new york in order to get their stadium refurbished back in the 70s and uh then to get a new stadium built uh, there were rumblings that they might consider moving to new jersey for example so uh, anybody can move any team can go any way keep in mind the detroit pistons were the fort wayne pistons were they? That I did not know. Yes. Before my time. Before they played in Detroit, they played in Fort Wayne, Indiana. I was unaware of that. That's true. Bad. The team. So any team can move at any time. But was that when it was NBA though, or was that yes ABA or whatever it was called? No, they were never ever. They were never, ever in the ABA. Uh, they've always played in the NBA since the NBA uh, was founded in the 1940s. And uh, look at the New Jersey Nets. How many cities have they played in? I mean, they were they started out as the New Jersey Americans in the ABA. Later they became the New Jersey Nets, then the New York Nets, then the New Jersey Nets. Now they're going to be the Brooklyn Nets. I mean, these teams are up to the highest bidder. Whoever wants them, that's who gets them. Whoever gives them the best deal, that's where they're going to go. Yeah. I mean, what other incentive would the owners of these teams have for keeping them where they are? Fan base. They're loyal, like it, Pittsburgh and uh, like, no one had Philly a more lo- no one no one had a more loyal fan base than the Cleveland Browns. No one. Uh. Cleveland wouldn't build a new stadium for the Cleveland Browns. So they moved to Baltimore where they got a new stadium. Well, I'm sure Illich is going to be building a new stadium for the Wings any year now. Oh, really? What's he waiting for? I I don't know. Yeah, you don't know. But the Joe's Joe's pretty awesome, so. Well, I've been there and I've enjoyed seeing games there. And a lot of the old arenas in the NHL are fun to watch games, but... Uh, doesn't have the luxury suites like a lot of the new arenas do. It doesn't have a lot of the amenities. And uh, 
at some point, uh, you know, and, and hockey is a good example. Um, hockey depends on revenue uh, from from fans because it has a lousy TV deal. Uh, it's not on television in most of the country uh, on channels that people can find. So yeah, they like make first. it by hiking the price on tickets. And by the way, as rabid as you say those fans are, the Red Wings don't sell out playoff games because the tickets are too expensive. They and are. there aren't enough people in Detroit who can afford to buy them. And it's getting worse. Well, guess what? It, would it be impossible to think that Portland, Oregon, for example, uh, could uh, could attract the Red Wings uh, with the Rose Garden, which is a fantastic facility? Where? I'm sorry, I missed that. Portland, Oregon, for example? No. Portland, Portland Oregon is the home of the other white meat. And it's known that they want a National Hockey League team. I think hockey, in general, is an un, like, unde- undesired sport. Well, Branch. so uh, it would be entirely possible for people to come in and say, well, all right, hang up in the middle of my conversation, if you like. It would be entirely possible for people to say, you know what? Here's a, here's a, here's an arena deal. Here's a place that holds 20,000 people, more than the Joe Louis Arena. Uh, here's a place that's uh, untapped uh, in, in the growing uh, West Coast market. Detroit is declining. The auto industry is shrinking. Uh, the pro- subprime mortgage crisis has caused many people in the Detroit area to lose their homes. Uh, the playoff games don't sell out in Detroit. They might sell out on the West Coast. It's not impossible. Don't start spreading any rumors based on this. I'm just saying that you could make a case for that as as hard as you find that to believe. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. This is not sports talk. It's just wide open telephones. Anything goes. Tom, Tom, Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. I never pretended to be a nice guy. The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show with wide open telephones at 1 800 5800 Tom. 1 800 5800 866 Alex on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Alex. Doing great. Hey, I want to comment on Barry Bonds. What do you think? Well, are you surprised that Barry Bonds was indicted? Not at all. Let me tell you why. Uh, today in the L.A. Times article, uh, you have a shoe size of 10 and a half in 1999, and in 2007, it goes to a 13. What's up with that, man? You know what they say about big feet. <laughs> of course. Hey, unless man, you're on, think, by the uh, way, the unless, you're on, unless, you're on st- unless you're on steroids. <laughs> right, right, with his big old head, right? So, uh, <laughs> listen, I think uh, the record should go out the window. I think that um, he's not a Hall of Famer, and uh, his career is over. Well, the records are not going out the window. Uh, Babe Ruth played much of his career drunk or with a hangover. So did Mickey Mantle. Um, many players played under the influence of cocaine in the 1970s. Nobody took away Daryl Strawberry's records or Dwight Gooden's records or any of that. So um, I think the uh, sport should be honest. And uh, in the Hall of Fame, they should say exactly what happened, including the allegations of him lying and what the outcome of that trial ultimately is. But uh, you think you'll do any time? what's that? You think you'll do any time? I, I'm skeptical about whether he'll do time. I'm skeptical right. about um, right because my understanding of perjury is that it's very hard to prove intent. Correct. You know, when he says he didn't knowingly take steroids, how do you prove what he knew? Right, right, right. Kind of like uh, Rafael Palmero. I don't know what I was thinking. I don't know if you remember that. <laughs> well, or Oliver North or other figures of the last 25 years, 50 years in history, okay? Plenty of people have said uh, Richard Nixon. I mean, what did they know and when did they stop knowing? Right. 
Right, right. You know, it's, it, the, it, it, I mean, every every proof I've heard that Barry Bonds lied seems to say, well, there was uh, they raided the Balco headquarters and they found a test that said that Barry Bonds tested positive for steroids. But does it say in there that he saw the results of the test or that he read the results or understood the results? I don't see that anywhere. Now, they may have proof that we haven't seen or heard about, and that's entirely possible. But yeah. I think it's. Everybody I've read and everybody I've heard from says that proving perjury is hard, and that's why it's rarely prosecuted. I mean, remember during the O.J. trial when Mark Furman lied on the witness stand? Mark Furman was never convicted of anything. Yeah, 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 that's right. That's right. Good point. Good point. Second uh, second point here. Um, what do you think of Alex Rodriguez? $275 million. Is he worth it? Well, I, I believe that you're worth whatever you can uh, uh, hoodwink someone into paying you. I'm certainly worth what I'm that. getting paid, I'll tell you that. <laughs> hey, you're worth that money, Tom, and more, okay? Well, that's my point. Uh, I think. Uh, by the way, you at work, whatever you do, you're getting exactly what you you deserve, too. Right, right, right. Hey, I appreciate you taking my call. Can you take me out Colby style? Of course I can, Alex. Here you go. Oh, oh. This is about us. Uh, She's so special to me. Uh, yeah, it beats in my heart. Uh, yeah, the air I breathe. Uh, She's so special to me. Uh, uh, Wide open telephones on the Tom Likas show at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Carlos. Hello. Hey, how's it going, Tom? Great. Long time listener, first time caller. Thank you yeah. so much. Didn't want to make a jackass out of, my, out of myself with the other calls, but this one is a little bit relevant to me. The guy that was, that sent you the email uh, about the Seattle Supersonics? Yes. i uh, been to Seattle, love the place, uh, love the city. Um, like you said, they're going to go where the money's at. Uh, it's one of the one of the main reasons why Sterl the Pearl still has the Clippers here in L.A. Uh, you know, they're, they're, they don't get their you, – you don't see any of the home games get sold out. You don't see, you know – bunch of fans going to all these Clipper games, but that's where we make the most, or that's where Donald is going to make the most revenue, so that's exactly where he's going to take them. Well, plus, Donald Sterling for many years had one of the more profitable franchises in the NBA, and the reason is between the revenue sharing and the luxury taxes and the fact that his payroll was next to nothing, um, he had no expenses. Well, plus, he got like an equal share of the TV money, even though the Clippers were almost never on TV. Uh, national TV, they, you never saw the Clippers until about two, three years ago on TNT or ABC or before that NBC. You never saw them on TV. But Donald Sterling got an equal share of the TV money to everybody else. Wasn't there a clause, Tom, somewhere on there that um, if if he didn't make the playoffs a couple of years back, that he would still be he would still be entitled to some money or something? Well, of course. I mean, every owner in the NBA is entitled to a share of the TV money. That, that was what it was. Whether you win or lose. Yeah. So it, it, it actually, it's like, I don't know if you ever saw the play or the movie The Producers, but it's the plot of that film is that you can make more money with a flop than a hit. You can make more money. It's just like the TV networks may make more money with the writers on strike than they make with the writers showing up to work. Yeah. There you and, go. and the same thing with uh, the Clippers. The Clippers made more money probably than Jerry Buss did with the Lakers. By not spending any money. Well, they never signed anybody big. You're right. We had a verbal agreement from Kobe, and then 10 minutes later, he signed with the Lakers. Well, I, that I wouldn't blame on Elgin Baylor or Donald Sterling. Uh, but over the years, how many number one draft choices went fleeing from the Clippers? Um, yeah. <laughs> look how many times the Clippers traded down or got rid of the number one draft choice for whatever reason. Right. Yeah. We've been definitely branded with some bad luck. No, you have not been branded with bad luck. Uh, that was all by design. It's all managerial. That, it's all man that, that was how Donald Sterling wanted to run the team. Now, the last couple of years, they have made an effort to try to actually uh, be competitive. Right. Uh, for the first time in my memory. True. But, um, you know, we will just see uh, how long they are interested in doing that before they go back to doing it the old way. <laughs> I really appreciate you taking the call, Tom. Can you bust me out of Kobe on this one? You know I can, Carlos. Oh. Oh. This is about us. 
She's so special to me. Uh, yeah, it beats in my heart. Uh, yeah, the air I breathe. Uh, She's so special to me. Uh, uh, it's 1-800-5800-TOM. Christopher is listening to our online stream in Salt Lake City, Utah. On the Tom Like His Show, hello. How are you today, Tom? I'm okay. I really do care. Thank you so much. Yeah, I think it's, uh, you know, I think it's cool. I think your show's good, and I think you uh, approach a lot of interesting topics. You and, certainly uh, won't hear a radio show like this on the air in Salt Lake City. No, never in a million years. And that's why I have to stream you offline. Right. But, uh, you know, it's good. I can, I, can, I can hear what the world is really like outside the fishbowl of Salt Lake. And, that's uh, right. You know, it's interesting out there. So, um... So I, I'm going to take you up on your offer to, uh, you know, talk about something. You mentioned earlier on your show that it's okay if we kind of talk about whatever. Right. So, that's what Wide Open Telephone is all about. Any topic. Yeah, is that still okay? No, I changed my mind in the last 48 minutes. <laughs> all right. Well, we can talk about how bad the World Series sucked. We can talk about whatever you like. Go ahead. Okay. So here's my question for you. And I just kind of want to know your opinion, if you will please tell me what you think of what you think of pornography and the uh, the effects it has on society? This is a big issue in Salt Lake. We we actually have a porn czar, yes, and uh, very conservative culture. And so, you know, I I don't know that I can't remember ever having heard you mention or or approach this topic on your show before. And uh, I just kind of you know a lot of the things you say, you know, I I. I sort of wish I didn't take uh, things a um, talk show host says to heart, but in your case, I honestly take some things you say to heart. And uh, so, you know, I just kind of want to hear what you have to say about about that. Well, I, I don't think pornography is hurting society, except if there are people who have a gun to their head and being made to perform uh, in a porn video. That's one thing. As far as watching pornography, uh, I don't think it harms society at all. I don't see what the big deal is. As long as you're not uh, you know, involving children or teenagers, as long as you are uh, getting adults who are consenting to perform in the videos, um, I don't see what the problem is. By the way, I, I don't say this as a fan of pornography. I, pornography does nothing for me. Right. But I am fully in favor of people getting it anything legal on video that they want to get. That's good. Thanks, man. Not That's a problem. I mean, the Internet's the best thing that happened to you in Salt Lake City. Now you can look at any porn you like. That's exactly <laughs> right. I mean, previously, the only sleazy thing you could do in Utah was to have ten wives or whatever. But now, now you can watch uh, the rest of us uh, getting it on in other states. <laughs> the porn czar is helpless. The porn czar is helpless. And plus you get to listen to the Tom Likas show, which the radio stations won't let you do. Tom Likas, baby. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, long-time listener since, like, 98. Thank you for that, Christopher. How do you deal with uh, being limited on when you can buy alcohol and where? Uh, you have to buy alcohol from, uh, you know, state-run liquor stores. Right. Well, there are many states that do that, but aren't there limits like on what time of night you can get a, a drink or or buy liquor? Yeah, last call is at one o'clock. Uh huh. And uh, after that, you know, no more no more alcohol sales, and then they don't allow it till noon the next day. And uh, can you buy liquor freely on Sunday? Yes, you can. Uh, no, because the stores are closed. Actually, there we go. You can and buy can beer you... at the supermarket. And, and that's then, of course, it. the alcohol content is 3.2. So it's light beer only? Uh, well, light beer has more to do with calories. It's low content, low alcohol content beer, so 3.2% by volume. So what would be the, some of the brands you see in the supermarket? Uh, uh, basic uh, Coors, Miller, um, you know, your big, any, like, Anheuser-Busch yeah. products. But no Stella. No Stella, Artois, or... Um, Nothing good, really. N nothing with the uh, no malt liquor. No malt liquor. No forties. <laughs> no forties. <laughs> of course, without hip hoppers, what do you need a forty for? You can't. You can't buy a forty. <laughs> are there any Mormon uh, hip hoppers, by the way? Oh, you know what? I'm sure there are. I'm sure there are. 
And uh, I want to see a guy in cosmic undergarments with gang signs. I think that would be fantastic. That would be hot, Tom. <laughs> that would be totally hot. That's a great idea. I love it. Thank you, Christopher. Salt Lake City checking in. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likas Show.